The new internet policy, however, clearly prohibit, prohibits FBI employees from engaging in a cover activity in which they represent false or claim to be members of the news media unless the activity is authorized as part of the undercover operations. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Band series. This is my official The Armchair Critic. Today, I'll be looking at a video that I have created in our social media concerning the ongoing Mandamano. And it was recorded by one of the journalists from Citizen TV, that's that Citizen Digital. But why this video and not the other that were circulating or rather trending in our social media today? Let's look at this video and then I'll explain to you why I think this video needs more scrutiny and needs more action than any other video that you're going to see on the social media apart from more than security and everything else that is happening. So let's watch this video and then I'll explain to you why I don't think this should be happening in this time and age. Uh -huh. Yeah, we understand. So what you need to take note is that uh, there is a guy who is dressed in maroon, he runs not this protester and runs with him. So this is the key thing about this video and why it shouldn't be happening. Before I even give you the story of why I don't think this should be the case, let's go back to some history and look at the U.S. in a case that involves the FBI and some 15-year-old 15 15 year high school student or pupil, whichever the case that you went to college. So in 2007, in June, there was this guy called Charles, Jen Charles Jenkins. He was a brilliant student who sent box threats to his teachers and administrators. And you would ask yourself, why we use emails? Why, how wouldn't you know who is sending the email? So the teachers and the administrators send the information to the FBI and the FBI actually did some uh, investigation when it not the person, but they couldn't because what Charles Jenkins was using was proxy servers, which were located in the Euro. So when the FBI couldn't trace him, yeah, they had to involve the cyber cyber crime task force of the FBI headquarters. So the process, the cyber crime headquarters again realized that he was using a proxy server and it was hard to trace him. So they had to come up with a program which they could send to him and they could click and they could actually trace his location. So how they did this, they masqueraded, they disguised themselves, they acted claim or rather posed as journalist, as an editor of the KP, an associate press, and started communicating to Charles Jenkins. And in the process of communication, the FBI who had disguised themselves as an associate press editor, sent uh, Charles Jenkins, who was sending the bomb press to the instructors and teachers, a link to fake articles and pictures. Those pictures had embedded were embedded with a with a program that uh, that could just run in Jen, Jenkins' computer when he clicks on them. So when Jenkins clicked on them, then they could be able they were able to trace him, and they were able to arrest him, and they were able to now prosecute him. Two days down the line, Wire.com writes an article that was titled FBI Secret Spyware a tracks down teen who made bomb threats two days after uh, after Charles Jenkins had been uh, sentenced to 90 days in prison in detention because it was a juvenile and then two years of monitoring but that is not the key thing that I'm talking about here so two days later the wire writes is that for it for the FBI secret spyware a tracks down teen who made bomb threats why is this information important? Uh, that was two days and then the story died there. Later, seven years later, in 2014, 2014 is where the whole story just surfaced again after some investigation 
and the 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 other the associate press and other people are related to the press came into came into the picture writing to the attorney general asking questions on what really happened so i will read to you on why all of this process was wrong for the fbi to disguise themselves as the members of the uh, media i will not really read you all the things but i'll just give you the finding so there is a new policy currently that the fbi cannot really disguise or rather uh, cause or claim to do the media in the investigation but that can be done again but with other processes but let me just say to you why in 2007 it was possible for them to masquerade or rather to hide themselves as journalists and it was somehow allowed like currently when they have the new policy on how they conduct themselves when they're going about the investigations so let me just read you a conclusion of that matter so the conclusion was FBI policies in 2007 did not expressly address the tactic of agent impersonating journalists. They further found that the FBI undercover police then, then, that is 2007, in effect provided some relevant guidance but were less than clear. Meaning there are policies, but those policies are not really clear that you cannot disguise yourself as a journalist while conducting your investigation. They also noted that uh, they determined that once the undercover plan was launched, that an investigative decision were made concerning communications, the undercover agent sent to the individual suspected of making the bomb threats. That is the Timberline investigation. You can go and check. That is uh, where Charles Jenkins was, was in a high school called Timberline High School. So, uh, so the key thing you need to talk is that at the time, as a result, we believe that the judgment agents made about aspects of the plan and the cover activity in 2007 to pause as an editor for the AP did not violate the undercover policies in place at that time, that is 2007. So they found that prior to the adoption of this new policy, the new policy, I said, this came seven years later after the story and been forgotten, seven years later it comes up again, and then now they are trying to make their findings. So they say that prior, they found out that prior to the uh, adoption of the new policy, Italian policy, which was done in 2014, FBI policy would not have permitted FBI employees from engaging in the undercover activity agent conducted during the 207 Timberland investigation. The new interim policy, which is now the 2014, like this is a report which was done in 2016, says that the new interim policy, however, clearly prohibits prohibits FBI employees from engaging in undercover activity in which they represent or obtain to be members of the news media unless the activity is authorized as part of the undercover operations. So this is one of the things that you need to understand. It has to be included in authorization as part of the undercover operation. But again, in case there is need for the undercover uh, FBI to masquerade or pose its claim or to disguise themselves as the agency of the media, there are things that they need to undergo. They need to write to the FBI in the headquarters, that is the US. Then the headquarters of the US FBI, FBI field office will have to write again to the review committee, undercover review committee who will still write to the deputy, deputy director of the FBI, who will approve this, but he doesn't approve just directly like that. He has to consult with the attorney general. So you see, it's not something that is not automatic that we just decide to go to the field and say, you're going to masquerade or whatever, you can disguise yourself as a journalist or a member of the press and, and perform your duties. So from this video, the way this person was behaving, as you can see, he was just holding the camera and behaving as if he's a journalist. So you can see he's behaving and other journalists are here. I can see one moving aside and then he pretends and sees everybody and that runs, grabs the guy and pins him for him to be arrested. So this is the thing that we say it undermines, it threatens 
it it's it, it undermines and threatens the credibility of the media and its security. Like you cannot work because everybody will think you are an undercover agent. So let's look at this video from from a. Uh, one of the former chief of these guys, John Mendez, that's the former chief of these guys in the U.S. talking about the CIA. What, who can they masquerade themselves to be and who can they not uh, disguise themselves as? So this is a video. There are three covers that are basically off limits to CIA, and that would be um, a religious figure, media figure, and um, Peace Corps. Not that we don't like the Peace Corps, we love the Peace Corps, but it has to stay kind of pure. You gotta do what's right. It cannot be suspected of harboring CIA officers, can you imagine? No. Priests are so vulnerable, they're just out there. If they're accused of being a spy, they don't have any structure to protect them, they're too vulnerable. God damn it. We also don't use the media as a cover. Same reason. So basically, we don't use the media because of the same reasons why. They're vulnerable, they're out there, they don't have protection, etc., etc. So whatever happened today in the Mandaman or Wednesday, uh, plain clothes police are uh, disguising themselves as the media then executing their duty was not right. And I believe this video should get to the Media Council of Kenya, the guild, press guild or whatever they're called, and, and all those that are related that this should not happen again. And the police, law enforcers should keep distance from uh, disguising themselves as members of the press, as priests, or as peace corps, and I, I guess even the, the Red Cross members, I, I, I hope I got that right, but I don't know whether Red Cross are part of the people that are supposed to disguise themselves as, but the key thing is that these people are vulnerable, they shouldn't be disguising themselves as the priests, the journalists, as uh, peace corps, as Red Cross members, that's a key thing. But that was wrong. It shouldn't happen again. So let's this stop. Let the Media Council of Kenya give uh, a press release about the same that this is very wrong and it should never happen again, especially when it's being done by a plain clothes police officer. So with that, that's the end of my expose today, or that at my end of my series. Please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and give your comment according to what you think, what I get, is it is it really worth it, is it not worth it? But I'll give an attachment of that document that I just read right now, the report from, uh, let me just get, the report from the Office of the Inspector General, U.S. Department of Justice, uh, documenting this story of a review of the FBI impersonation of journalists in criminal investigation that is in the U.S. 